Good morning. What is up, everybody? I've got something special for you today. We have a comparison between a vintage Les Paul copy and the Epiphone Les Paul copy. Epiphone's an Epiphone, but it's kind of the Gibson Les Paul copy. Mid-range guitar, four, five, six, seven hundred bucks. And the vintage is four, five to six hundred bucks. Found this one though on Reverb for three hundred. Went ahead, grabbed it, but because it had a small crack in the back of the neck, I'm able to return it free shipping, etc., etc. I probably would have kept it, but the neck wasn't responding to truss rod adjustments either. So I figured it's best with a crack and a little stress down here. I figured it best to return it. But so, you know, it's not like I have a lot of money. I'm just buying stuff. This one's a free return, so why not return it? Good deal here on Reverb, Gold Top. But I figured while I have them both here, I will see how they sound. I'm going to try to do a kind of a blind run today. Um, I'll just play real short and simple, some dirty tones, some clean tones, and then you can see which one you think sounds better, and then at the end, I'll reveal it. But let's take a look at them real quick. Very similar. Um, the craftsmanship on the Gibson the, is a little bit better. You'll notice that at places like here where the nuts and the binding meet, here it's just a little crisper, a little better job on the Gibson for the finish. Whereas on parts of the vintage, not as good, but you're gonna be blown away with how good it sounds. Binding all the way around. It's real nice. The finish is beautiful. It's got a mahogany body and neck, just like the Epiphone. And it has a maple cap, just like the Epiphone. These are the M series by Wilkinson. Wilkinson. And I love the patina, you know? I love this finish, the gold hardware. And that honey burst is just incredibly beautiful. Really like it. Um, and then over here, we have the same, pretty much, the same kind of trapezoid inlays. Again, great binding work. Um, one thing you'll notice right off the bat is this margin here on the pit guard versus this margin here. All right, so that much of the body on the vintage is taken away. I'll show you the back. There's a reason for that. You have a little better access to the frets on the vintage. But on this gold top, the plastic doesn't quite match the color's just a tad bit off between the binding and some of the other package or the plastics, which is not a big deal. It's subtle. You probably won't even see it, but it's there. Um, also, gold hardware has a tendency to not age real well. Shiny, I'm not sure about, when, but when they do matte gold, like on the Schecters, it ages really poorly. I hate how it antiques out. All right, so let's take a look at the back. On the vintage, you have this nice additional cutaway here on the body, which is a real nice feature. It allows you good access, but there's that little stress fracture. Some stress, like somebody was doing some neck bends, and then right here, you've got, I don't know if it'll show up, my camera really sucks, but there's a small crack right there. I don't know if it would even be a factor, but a beautiful guitar, if it were, absent of those things. Old school tuners with the uh, green plastic tips, supposed to look like jade perhaps. Very nice. And then over here on the Epiphone, these Grover tuners are super nice. Uh, I haven't felt a nice tuner like that in a while. They're real big and bulky, but they are so smooth. And it's fine. You still have good access to the back and the neck. Plastic has some little shiny stuff in it. It's real nice, but very pretty guitar. Again, very pretty guitar over there. There's a really cool, that's about all the differences. All right, so we'll give them some tones. And I won't show you which one's playing which. You can kind of decide which one you think sounds better. And the reason I started tracking these things down is I did one of Les Paul. Um, some sort of cop because I don't have one and a buddy let me borrow his and it sounds really good through the Marshall 
it's got a particular tone. Those uh, PAF style pickups do sound really good. So I wanted one. Um, so I'm on the search for something that I can afford for a mid mid priced guitar. Then I saw a review of a V100 Lemon Drop versus a $3,500 Gibson Blues Master, and which in which the middle switch of the middle position of the pickup switch gives you the pickups out of phase and it's a real quacky kind of tone it's like a half cocked wah kind of have a little bit of a phaser sound to it a lot less low output a lot lower output but uh, it's got a unique tone I'm not real crazy about the tone but anyway it was a $500 vintage guitar versus a $3,500 Gibson it was also a blind deal I'll put the link in the description a blind test and uh, wouldn't you know it, I liked Guitar B, I think it was, B, and then come to find out it was the vintage, but it had a lot better tone, I thought. So we'll throw, uh, we'll throw these tones at you, see what you think. Um, but these in this price range, they're about the same. So it's more or less features and or name. If you're stuck on the Epiphone name, then you won't care tonally if there's a big difference. But if you're really after tone, you may... Uh, you may be surprised. I don't know. All right. All right, guitar A. <laughs> Thank you. 
time with guitar beat. was guitar B. <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, it's a little tighter, a little fatter. Uh, the pickups are a little hotter, so I don't know if that is fair. The pickup heights are the same. I didn't do anything, but I think those pickups are a little bit hotter. Whereas uh, this was guitar A. This is the first one played each time. And it's a little thinner. It's still... Still a really good tone, but a little bit thinner and uh, not quite as bassy, but both good. Um, but it's a little different. It's a little dying out. Uh, when I play that riff versus, and it could be just totally me, but I'm trying to play it as close to the same as I can. Uh, it's got a good feel. This vintage feels really good. Set up nicely. Uh, there's some tuning issues, intonation issues with this I can't get quite free of. The neck's just a little bit smaller on the vintage. Anyway, uh, also, I didn't bring this into play, but this has the Proline Electronics upgrade, so you can go split on the bridge pickup, split on the neck pickup, and or back here, there's a, even another one, which gives you that out of phase middle position, which is really kind of quacky. <laughs> But that doesn't uh, come into this comparison because the vintage isn't uh, capable of those kind of mods because it only has two wire single coil pickups. Well, they're humbuckers, but they uh, only have two conductors coming out. Okay, so I'm trying not to talk too much because that bothers people. <laughs> but... Uh, this feels good. If it didn't have that cracked in it, I'd probably keep it because I love the finish as well. We'll see. Uh, I can sell this for what I got it for. I'm pretty sure I got a beautiful deluxe case with it and the electronics upgrade, and it was still um, under 500 out the door. So, And I'm always fine taking a 20% loss if I keep something for a few months and really enjoy it. If I take 20%... That's kind of what you get in uh, shipping and tax when you usually buy something. So if I can get my shipping and tax back uh, after a purchase, I feel like I've done okay. All right. So I hope you appreciate it. Um, maybe you found that a bit of a surprise. Let me know in the comments. And uh, I'll, I'll put that other video in as well where the guy 
compares the uh, Gibson Blues Master to a vintage lemon drop, and you may be surprised, but this is uh, every bit as good a feeling instrument as the Epi. All right, Old Guy Jam is out. Stay safe.